Good morning. Hello. How is everyone? I hope you are doing well. Hi, hi, hi. Let me just turn this down a minute. Okay. So, so sorry about the plumber yesterday. Um, he did find the leak and fix it. Um, but in the end, we have to get a new floor put down um, and do some adjustments to the bathtub. So I spent all day yesterday after the live. Um, I designed a new pattern and got some colors around to stitch it up. I did thread order. But then after that, basically, I just looked at bathroom tiles for until about 12 o'clock at night. <laughs> Uh, I'm absolutely obsessed. And then I went to bed and was like, I'll just read a book to bed and I'll be fine. I fell asleep super quick. And then um, I dreamt about tiles all night, picking tiles and re rearranging them. So obviously I need a break from that. <laughs> so I'm so happy for the stitch along. <laughs> so today we're going to do these little flowers on the side here. And I'm going to fill up this side as well. Um, and then this whole area will be filled. So we're going to use six strands. I've chosen Anchor 895. And we're just going to do some little daisies, but we're just going to do them with just straight stitches. Just, just, just. We're going to do them with straight stitches. So we're not looking for like satin stitches or anything like that. These are going to be nice full daisies or other flowers that look similar. All right, let's go. All right, so you can choose to either do the flowers first or you can do all of the leaves first. That's up to you. Good morning, Marian, and good morning, Helen. New, they've just come. So don't forget these are here. I'm gonna put these on top of this one, just stitch right over it. So I'm gonna start with that one first. And you can do this a couple different ways. You can do either two stitches for each one if you want to make your, um, if you want to make your petals a little bit thicker like that, or you can just do one stitch for each one and make a couple more, or you can actually double your thread and make 12 strands and just do one stitch for each one. It's okay if you're behind Helen. All of the videos are there, um, except yesterday's, because I was using my phone to make mock-ups of <laughs> my bathroom. <laughs> uh, see, I'm one of those people that I like um, something that's a little bit different and a little bit, you know, interesting and, like, not um, safe. But then also, I think um, with tile, it's hard because you can't just take it off if you want to do it, do it again. You know, like with paint, you can just paint it. But with tile, it's like you're pretty much done. You pick the thing, you put it in and it's done. So I'm a little bit feeling stressed out about that, like. Oh my God, you know? So I'm looking at some star tiles from Best Tile. They have some really nice tiles there. I should probably talk about embroidery instead of my freaking tiling my bathroom. Um, but really, these are super simple flowers. They're just straight stitches. You can make two on top of each other, like I'm doing. And you can make them a little bit poofy. You know, they have like a little bit of a, they like get raised up a little bit. 
or you could do um, just one strand and fill it in even more. So you could even put one strand in between each of these, one stitch, sorry, because I'm using six strands. Please don't get confused with that. Um, so you could put one in between each one of these and make it a really like full looking flower. Whereas this one, there's a lot of space in between each of the petals. So it just depends on what you like to do. You could also mix it up. So you could use different colors. So a couple pink, a couple purple, a couple blue. You can mix colors in the same thread, meaning um, maybe two strands of purple, two strands of blue. There's a lot of things that you can do with this. And because it's such a simple stitch, it's literally just two, two strands right next to each other. Even this one is two, two stitches right next to each other, not two strands. Um, but there's so many things that you can do with that. So on details day, um, which is towards the end, you can even do um, another color with just one stitch in the middle like that. And it gives a little bit of color just in the middle there. Picking color is definitely difficult, but I always say if you go with your favorite colors, then you'll always like them, you know? Sometimes I've picked colors just because, oh, I don't have any of that in this one. And I end up not liking it because I think, Do you know what, I don't even really like that color. I don't know why I've even picked it. Now with these, if you do 12 strands, obviously you just need to do one stitch instead of two stitches. Good morning, Melanie. Typical me, like not following the pattern here. What's your favorite color palette? Ooh. That's a good question. What are your favorite color palettes? I tend to go for different things in different parts of my life. So with embroidery, I love um, all of all of them. I love a good like pastel color palette or like bright and colorful or like moody. There's so many different ones. So like it makes it so easy to like change, you know, with my clothes. I normally wear black, dark blue, dark red, like this kind of uh, mustardy color, not mustardy, um, brick, you know, orange. Yeah. Rust, that's what it is. And then like a mustardy um, yellow top. I usually, I wear that one a lot. But if I could just have black clothes, that would be it. That would be okay. And then around my house, uh, a lot of things are white or black or wood or gray. So I feel like in the embroidery, because I know I, I doesn't have to stay like that forever. I can like be a little bit more experimental with my colors and the things that I choose. And you know what? You can always change. So... Um, that's what I love. You know, I could do something really bright and colorful on this one and then on the next one, do something completely different. Lots of people voting for black clothes. Definitely black for clothes. Black is my number one when it comes to clothes. Yes, I wear lots of black. Yeah, I don't know what it is. about creative people liking black clothes. But I'm also like really practical like with my clothing. So if I know that if it needs to be ironed or if I know that, um, you know, it's only like dry clean only or if it's white, I'm immediately like, no, it's going to be see-through. If it's white, even if you have the right bra and stuff, you're probably going to see something through it. And two, it's going to get dirty so quickly. So no.
But I always tend to get things in black. Yeah, someone said, I just think that it's timeless. Yeah. Veronica says, I used to wear loads of black, but now it's hard to brighten up my clothes with patterns. See, that's smart too. I have a lot of like black bottoms, but then like something else for the top or like gray bottoms and then something else for the top. <laughs> I just realized that it's turned so you can't see. And someone says, I've got little kids and black's the worst when they have snotty noses, snail trails all over black clothes. Yes. That is true though. Okay, do I have enough to jump around? We can probably do some over here. Hannah. Thank you. I think I remember that from yesterday because someone called you L-I-E-B-E. -E. <laughs> the last part of your username. Yeah, so if you did 12 strands on here, you'd only need one go, you know, one stitch. Um, but it is a bit more bulky and they don't always lay flat together. So I will show really quickly how to do that on the very last one, just in case you wanted to try with 12 strands. Do you know what? I know that because someone's ordered, was it you? Someone's ordered a, um, something in German, uh, a handwriting hoop and it's all in German and, um, it's really funny because there is like a message and then it says like from like mom and dad and like something else and it's in two other people, but it's in, it's all in German and it's all in a handwriting. And I was having such a hard time because one, I didn't know what it said because it's in German, but, but two, um, because I didn't know what the message was, it was really hard to know like how to space it. You know, like if you write like, happy birthday, really big. And then like at the bottom, normally you write a little bit smaller, like love Tori or something. I didn't know if it was meant to be like a, you know, something, something big. And then like love these people at the bottom. I was like, I don't know what it says. <laughs> no, it was not you. Oh, okay. That's all right. I just found it really funny. I was like, I don't, I don't mean to be like rude, but what does it say? <laughs> All right. So what I've done is I've got the two, two strands here, uh, two, six strands of thread here. Yeah. Tied on a knot. So it makes 12. And then here's just a loop. So I've just folded this long piece over and put a knot on the end. And you can see it'll look a little bit different. I just go a little bit quicker though. Sometimes the threads, um, they get a little bit tangled together. Um, not tangled like a knot, but um, tangled like twist, twisted around each other. So they don't make a, a nice, um, how, when you have just six strands, you can like lay them right next to each other really nicely. But when you have 12, sometimes it will twist around together and not lay as nicely. I'm going to make this one a little bit more full because these are perfectly spaced out and they look weird. Ooh, I might. I think she said it means we love you. And then it's like her family, her family's names. But um, the handwriting was a little bit difficult too. Um, but that's why I love the handwriting hoops because it's so personal. You know, someone else might not know exactly what it means or what it says, but you might look at it and go, oh my God, I know exactly what that says. So that's quite sweet. Jessie wants to go sit in the backyard, so she's just walking around. Just walking around me like, do you see I'm here? Please go open the door. 
But she's gonna have to wait, guys. Okay. So there's a little bit, and I've just got this one more. I don't know what is it with six, because I did six over here, and I did six over here. Normally, I don't like doing even numbers, um, unless it's just two, you know, and they're like not right next to each other, but I'd much rather do odd numbers. Those flowers look so pretty. It reminds me to use number 895 again. It is a pretty color, this pink. I wish I could swing this camera over to, sh to show you Jessie because she's just sitting there staring at me, just standing in the middle of the room, just staring at me. Like, I've asked you nicely. I'm about to get mad. Please let me outside. Okay, so there's that. I'll finish with these. And then I'm going to do... Um the bottom part as well. So the stems and leaves, they're the exact same way that we did the ones yesterday. Or you can choose to do um, like a satin stitch with them. But I'm gonna do three strands just like we did yesterday. This one is number 412. It looks like that, but it doesn't say anchor or DMC, so it might be from the kit because it looks like it looks like it's a, a kit color from the Green Plants kit. But I've been trying to write kit on the ones that are kits just so I can like remember, you know? So I don't have to color match each one. So these ones you can do one straight stitch down or you can do the two back stitch like we did yesterday, how we did kind of two parts because some of them lean to the left and some of them lean to the right. These ones are pretty much straight up and down. I will put yesterday's video on YouTube. Um, I was just using my phone all day yesterday to sort tiles. Oh, Susanna says, how do you feel about mixed threads that are not 100% cotton? I find the colors so bright. Um, what brand are you talking? What brand? So I'm going to do just a straight stitch down and then I'll mix a little bit of the like little satin stitches so you can see what I mean. And that's just to fill in these leaves. So you can do a couple straight stitches down, but go through the same hole down here. And on the other side, and go down through the same hole. And it can make that little, like, you know. She says, the ones I got are brandless, a kit I got from Amazon. Oh. And you don't think that they're cotton? That they're not 100% cotton? I think most of the threads that I've seen are 100% cotton. So for this one, you can either, if it will work for you, slide your needle up under each of these. Like that. Or you can make uh, three separate lines. So one to here, one to here, one to here. I don't want to talk a big game. Oh, she says no, because when I burn the tip, it's plastic-ish. Oh, that's interesting. I don't think I've ever used 
that brand before. Can you move your head, Jessie? She's come to lay down. Can you just... Okay, just like that. Goodness. She's come to lay on my feet to tell me. Let me out. But they look 100% cotton. Huh. I don't think I've ever seen any like that before. I mean, I do recommend um, if you are going to iron your threads, put a cloth over top because even the 100% cotton ones sometimes can give almost like a shiny finish to the top. And I'm not a big fan of that. So obviously you can choose which way that you would like to do your stems and pet, uh, leaves. Because we've done so many different kinds now, you should have a good idea of how to like mix and match to make it how you want it. There's no right or wrong way. So if you want to do some lazy daisies here to make that um, drop look like this, hi George, then you can, or you can fill it in with a little stem stitch, or you could just do one straight stitch on either side, like boom, boom. I would do more threads though, if you wanted to do that. Just because the three strands looks a little weak. It's not a very bold line. Got another predicament here. Let's see if we can weave it underneath. So you can always weave them underneath. Weave your threads underneath other threads. <laughs> I love that we can count on a high George in every stream. Yeah, so he's one of my friends who lives in London, and he started doing this last year, and every single time that he sees me online, he, he says hi with his little hand. Okay, we're almost finished here, and then obviously you still have the, I'm going to put this to the side. Obviously, you still have the greenery over here to do on this side. Um, so I would use the same colors that you did if you didn't, if you didn't already fill in this side. Because I know some people were waiting um, until we did the flowers on this side. probably good enough okay let's do a little knot on the back what is happening and then we'll just take these other colors and do that random ish assortment of straight stitches the lazy daisies and give the other side some grass. And then we'll be finished. So again, you can fill this up as much or as little as you want to. Totally up to you. Is this the same color? Yeah. Okay. I believe you. What number is the flower's color? It's Anchor um, brand thread, and it's 895. Most of the time, I don't know, because I forget to write it down on the pegs. Um, but I do know that one, because I definitely wrote it down on the peg. <laughs> 
Now you can also use these little guys. I'll move it down in the middle. In the middle. Not the same, but anchor too. I see. So this right here is where you could always um, make some of these greeneries go around the house. So if you have a little mistake like I do here where I've pulled this one too tight and made the threads um, pull in like that, then you could always put a little, almost like one of these, but just coming up around there, yeah. Um, you could also just extend this little bulb one to be a little bit farther and just go over the house a little bit. So you can always fix your little uh, mistakes on the edge if you wanted. So remember the background, we'll do little ones. And the farther down we get, we'll be bigger. We're giving that illusion of perspective. I've had a couple people ask about stitch alongs, um, not just in yesterday's live, but like message me and ask about when are we going to do another one? and what date is it gonna start, and all that kind of stuff. Um, we haven't finished this one yet, so I haven't planned the next one. <laughs> um, but I will do another one soon, so don't worry about that. In the meantime, if you haven't done all the other stitch-alongs in the shop, go and see if one of those, you know, if you fancy any of the designs of any of those. Um, they are, there's a June stitch-along from last year. There is a, uh, let me think. There's the, the flowers and leaves one. There's the June one. Um, I'm going to put the bicycle one up again soon. That was February's of last year. But it's not quite up yet. I have to put all of the patterns back together because if you remember last year, it was a four-part mystery pattern. So I have to put them all back together after I've split them all up. Um, yeah, so the, and all the videos are on YouTube um, already. I would just ask that you please purchase the pattern and not just try to like draw it out yourself. I've noticed a couple people have um, not purchased. They've just started drawing them and then filling them in, you know? So that's a little bit, you know? Um, ooh, the bike one was great and fun having the mystery, even if I wanted to see it all at the same time. Yeah, so that was really split last year. Um, so it wasn't the one in 2020, it was the one in 2019. And some people really hated it. So in the feedback, they were like, it's too hard to draw. And I really didn't like it. And I was like, sorry. I thought it would be fun, but I guess I was wrong. But some people really liked it. So, so that's good. Um, yeah. And like, <laughs> Mary says, how rude. Um, I think she's talking about drawing the pattern like freestyle instead of, you know, purchasing the pattern. And it's something it's like, it's to do with like Etsy as well, because, um, like every time that you make a, per uh, you make a sale on Etsy for a shop, um, your shop like looks more active and then Etsy will show your shop to more people. So even if you go like a day or two without getting, in order, which doesn't even seem like that long, you know, just a day. Um, Etsy will show your things to like less and less and less people. Um, so that's why I put the sampler pattern as just two dollars because even if one person bought it like every couple of days, it would just keep you know you active. Um, so yeah. 
So there's like the reasoning behind that. So I think out of everything, I get like a dollar forty from it or something like that. So it's, I'm not like making like a ton of money, <laughs> but more people can do the sampler and get all the directions and everything. And it helps to support me. Yeah, and I will say that it was um, it was a little bit difficult to draw on stages. Um, so I don't know if I'll do another one of those again or not. Like a, a mystery one, you know? All right, I've just got the one color to go back and do. And I think that this side will be all finished. So if you notice, I still, come on, come on, come on. Just cooperate. If you notice, I still have the centers of all of my flowers to do. Um, and that's okay. Don't worry about it. We will have a details day where we're going to go through and I'll show you all the different ways that you can fill in um, your centers that are not just uh, French knots. Because I know a lot of people... Um, didn't, didn't, aren't keen on the French knots <laughs> and that's okay, but there's other ways that you could fill them in too. So, okay. So, um, Elle says could may have maybe a window display. Each window is a mystery until that week. Oh, that would be fun. Like not to make one whole pattern, but like square, 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 square or something like that. I see, Jessie. Calm down. She's very demanding today, isn't she? Like, cool your jets there, Turbo. I will say that it is difficult to try and make random lines random. You always want to, like, do them in a certain, like, pattern. <laughs> Like two this way, one this way. I always find it really difficult to like try and keep it random looking. Yeah, all that to say that there will be another one. I'm, I'm just not sure because I haven't, I haven't finished this one yet. So I'm not 100% when it'll be, what it'll be of. Kind of want to do like an underwater something or like a little like rabbit hole or something, you know, something that's like cute gives the rest of us time to catch up <laughs> okay where haven't I put any maybe just down here at the bottom corner yeah I think a coral themed one could be like really fun because then you'd be like, yeah, like underwater. It'd be really difficult, I think, to like find the stitches for all the different things and like make sure that they looked a little bit realistic. But I don't know. I've, I've already started like trying to draw a underwater pattern. But we'll see. No promises, okay? Yeah, like Ariel. Under the sea. Coral. Oh my gosh, loads of people are liking coral. Oh Jesus, what have I done? 
I've told my idea and screwed myself. <laughs> now I have to do an under the sea one down the rabbit hole like Alice in Wonderland so all the colors could be mixed up. Yeah. So thinking something like that or even like a like an actual little like rabbit hole. You know, like a little burrow like under the under the ground so there could be like flowers at the top and then like a like a circle with like dirt around it and then inside that inside the circle could be like a little home like um the Mr. Fox show like Mr. Oh, what's that movie called? You know like that little fox hole that they live in underneath the ground. Uh Fantastic Fox. Mr. Fantastic Fox. Fantastic Mr. Fox. I would be so crap on a quiz show. Oh my God. Can you even imagine? Terrible. Yeah, I think it'd be cute too. Cause like you could do like a little bit of flowers on the top or like a tree or something. And then if I don't do a stitch along for it, then I'll definitely do like just a pattern. I think it'd be so cute. Okay, I think that's it for today. Somehow I still make it 40 minutes, even though in my head I'm like, oh, it'll be something easy today. Just easy peasy, just a relaxing stitch. Cause we've done some like, you know, we've done some hard ones. Not hard, but time consuming, you know? So this is what we have so far. Woo! I think it's so cute. I love these little things. Again, I still think I need to do a couple more little grasses on this side because this side it went over so far with the flowers. So I need to like fill up a little bit. Um, but I could just make these petals a little bit bigger too. So that might be good. All right. I will leave you for today. Don't forget the Barmy Fox S-A-L. Please like and comment on other people's things to give them a little bit of love and encouragement. Um, I will put both of these videos up on YouTube today so that you can watch yesterday's and uh, do today's if you don't want to watch the one on, on here, you know, like on Instagram. Um, and I hope you have a lovely, lovely Thursday. Ooh, reminds me of the cottage from the film The Holiday. That is so cute. So have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.